Okay, I'm Richard Bowman. I'm a consultant paediatric ophthalmologist at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, which is one of the world's largest children's hospitals. Um, I'm also an associate professor at the International Centre for Eye Health in London. Uh, and as part of that job, I conduct research into children's eye problems and how to help them across the globe. So one of the, the commonest cause of visual impairment in children now in developed world and an increasing cause in the developing world is not damage to the eye itself but damage to the visual parts of the brain. 50% of the brain is used to process vision um, and children who are born prematurely or have difficult labour and delivery are vulnerable to damage to these parts of the brain and at the moment we don't have good ways of preventing that damage and there's no medical or surgical treatment for that damage once it occurs so children may be left visually impaired or blind for life. One of the challenges is that no one has really taken an interest in this problem because eye doctors think about the eye um, and if the problem is behind the eye in the brain, they think there's nothing we can do about it uh, and the children may not get the proper attention that, that they need to try and help maximise their development chances and their education chances um, in life. So, so the challenges for us as doctors are to try and find ways of preventing this damage and studies are going on using things like brain cooling in, in special care baby units or use of rare gases to protect the brain. So prevention is always the most important thing and even um, goes back as far as uh, managing maternal health to try and reduce the risk of premature uh, birth. Um, so prevention is one thing and then assessment, so working out that some children may have poor vision because of brain damage. Um, again, their eyes may look normal and even when we look into the back of their eyes and their retina, that may look normal because the problem is in the brain and sometimes these problems can get missed. Um, and uh, so finding ways of, of recognizing this problem early and therefore intervening is another challenge. And then finding ways that we can actually help children help the natural plasticity of the brain which means that young children's brains do have a natural ability to improve to reroute around damaged areas um, and specific forms of stimulation visual stimulation may help that so finding ways of actually helping uh, the brain to recover and vision to improve and also ways of helping children manage the, the visual impairment that they do have which is permanent so that it doesn't, um, so that we minimise the impact of that visual impairment on their education and quality of life. There's a, a shortage of evidence on intervention treatment strategies for these children because we, it's become, it's really only begun to receive the attention that it deserves. We've only just realised that it's the leading cause of visual impairment. Um, and um, interest is, is only really awakening uh, now. But there is some evidence that if we, if we identify the problem early uh, and start helping uh, babies, even at the stage of babies, perhaps even putting them in glasses while they're still babies, um, helping them by actively stimulating their vision, helping them to reach out to targets if they're not doing that, to follow targets with their eyes, doing this in a systematic way from an early age uh, and taking the child on gradually with the visual tasks they can do um, may have a, a long-term improvement in outcome for them. With older children, sometimes they may have um, quite good vision and the visual, the, the visual problems that they have only become apparent as they get older and seek to become independent. So they may be able to read down the optician's eye chart quite well, but when they go out into a busy street or a busy classroom full of visual clutter, 
they, they can't see effectively, they can't see and they can't function, they can't gain the independence and their education suffers as well. And studies have been published to show that these kind of problems can affect maths and English scores at school. And often these children, um, these poor results are due to visual problems that have been undetected and they can just be labelled as um, stupid or clumsy or sometimes autistic or having behavioural problems. And all of this may arise from visual problems that have gone unrecognised. So we're now what can we do to help them? We're now realising that we may have to test vision in ways that go beyond just simply looking down the letters on an optician's chart and to look at how children can process a complex visual scene, how they can see a moving target, um, how they use vision to control their own body, their hands and legs movement. Um, and by, by spending a bit of time talking to parents and children and giving some simple tests of visual perception, we can get an idea of what problems are going on and we can relate that to, to areas of damage on a MRI scan of the brain so that we can understand biologically what's going on and we can understand in practice how it affects the child's everyday life. Then we can uh, devise strategies to either improve the areas of um, problems. So for instance, if a child can't um, negotiate a busy pavement outside and is being in danger of run, being run over by cars every time they go near a road because they can't see moving uh, uh, targets, then these days there's a, a whole variety of video games that can be used to train children's vision to detect hazards in the edge of their vision that are moving towards them. And we can do that in a completely safe environment and they can monitor progress safely by, by progressing through different levels of the game. Um, also, just a simple understanding of perhaps a child can't see anything below um, their eye line because they've got a visual field problem uh, down below, which is a common result of injury to the visual brain. Just understanding that and... and uh, helping parents and teachers to understand that, teaching the child to stop and look down or maybe wear bright coloured trainers on their shoes to help um, their feet become more visible to them or putting uh, masking tape on the steps and stairs that they go down to help them with that can also make a big difference to their quality of life. I think there are, at the moment there are no real medical breakthroughs. As I say, there's work on preventing um, premature birth, work on protecting the brain in, in babyhood, in vulnerable babies, um, and uh, really um, the, the current field is more about trying to work out what problems these children have. At the moment we don't have technology to actually repair brain injury that's established in an older child, say five years old, but uh, it, this may be something that uh, in the future stem cell um, therapy might be able to address. So already there are conditions affecting the brain where you can inject stem cells into the bloodstream and the stem cells find their way to the appropriate part of the brain and, and uh, help improve function. And that may be something that over the next 10 years or so could be used for this problem of damage to the visual pathways in the brain. Mm -hmm.